Welcome to a new episode of Hacks and Hobbies with your host, Junaid Ahmed. Welcome to Hacks and Hobbies, LA edition. So this weekend, I am visiting LA, my family, my cousins getting married. And of course, LA is very, very well known for lots and lots of traffic. Anywhere you need to go takes you about an hour. They say 20 minutes, but that's not true because it almost always takes anywhere from 40 minutes to one hour. And since I arrived in LA, I am now driving from LA to Corona where my parents live. And it's always fun to be out here. And I thought that I was not going to be able to record any episodes over the weekend. But guess what? Long commutes is the formula for this podcast. That is the time that I'm able to dedicate to recording valuable information. Now, I wanted to do a two-parter, an interesting type of episode where I could do a live stream as well as be recording it and have callers call in. I were not there yet. I would need a second person driving the car to be able to handle that much load. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to record and talk about my experience of traveling solo. Now, a lot of you listening might have traveled solo on a number of occasions. Uh, My wife and I and our three children, anywhere we're traveling, we have lots of accessories, (laughs) lots of additional supporting materials, supporting things that we need when we are traveling specifically the diaper bag you've got to make sure we have the diaper bag we've got to make sure we have the stroller if we're going to a location where we want the baby to be when the baby's sleeping you want to lay her down so there's a lot of additional things we need now i have in about an hour long commute i've never done an hour long episode before and I don't know how much material I'll be able to talk about in this one hour. So this is the Labor Day weekend and so far I have been able to post one to two episodes per day. There is one episode that I have have not posted because of some technical difficulties that I won't talk about at this moment. We can probably get into it later. So traveling was not too bad. We did have a two-hour delay, which started to be 30-minute delay, and then it uh, became an hour long. Then about that time, they started boarding us. We got onto plane, and then they paused again because of the same issue that they had before. And then finally, we were boarded. Now, I probably missed my exit because I'm supposed to be going San Pedro South. I don't know which route Waze is taking me to Corona. It loves to find the most intricate and elaborate ways to get you to your destination as fast as possible. I like that about it. And since I grew up Southern California, I know the routes a little bit. So I'm taking my normal route that I usually take from LA to Corona. And I'm just sticking by that route. Waze just added two minutes to my route, which is okay. Don't mind it. Now, what makes a live or an actual podcast where which has a live quality is when you're getting live callers. You're like, all right, I'm around this point. The traffic is going 70 miles an hour. What are you guys about at it? about it right but i don't know i might be able to do it since i already know this route but it's telling me to take 710 south long beach as opposed to sticking with 105 which is i guess interesting okay so from 710 they'll take me to 91 east as opposed to sticking on 105 and then 605 to 91 east These numbers might be foreign to you because either you're not in California and maybe you're from the East Coast. Numbers are the numbers. So there's talking about freeways, right? Growing up in California, we we got used to driving on the freeways. You get on the highway, you get to where you want to get to, and sure, you sit through traffic, you sit through the parking lot, and you get to where you're going. But something interesting I found out when visiting other states that are not very heavy with the highways. For example, Delaware. Delaware has no highways, none so ever. And my 
cousin lives out there, so anytime we visit her, we are on the highway most of the part, but as soon as we enter Delaware, sorry, no more highways. Now, highways and freeways are two types of names for the type of roads. These are highways are regarded as more lanes in a street where you do have stoplights, but you have more lanes, so the traffic flows more. But on freeways, you get on the freeway and then you can't really, there's no stoplights, but you can exit. You can take exits and get off the freeway. So we're so used to the highway, freeway terminology that, you know, it's just interchangeable. But there's the te technically two different types of roadways. All right, so growing up in California, I learned about the highway system and the freeway system and how the numbers work. And I was like, wow, this is very intricate. So all the freeways, if you're in the East Coast, West Coast, Midwest, wherever you are, freeways that go from North to South. Now, these are interstate freeways because they cross interstates. All the highways that go from north to south or south to north are ending with the number 5. So we have the 5 freeway on the west coast and we have the 95 freeway in the east coast. So you see the numbers are increasing 5, 15, 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, 75, 85, 95. Now, lived in California, we have two north-south freeways such as the 5 and the 15. Then living in... Colorado, we had the 25 freeway there, which took us to Denver, and, and you could take the 25 down to Colorado Springs and 25 up to Lakewood or Longmont. I can't remember the names anymore. Sorry. Apologize. Other freeways I haven't experienced because I didn't live in those states. There's a lot of states from east to west, from west to east, and of course, there's a lot of number of freeways ending in number five. The odd number freeways that go from north to south, not really odd numbers, but they end in five. And there's a lot of freeways uh, in California that end with the number five. Now you might wonder why, what, what's going on with these freeways? Well, the thing is, these are the artery freeways. 405, 105, um, damn, can't remember of any other ones. 405 and 105 are two freeways, most popular freeways. Um, that get you from north to south as well, but they also um, go into the five freeway. Then we have the freeways ending in zero or 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. And these freeways go from east to west or west to east. And you have 10 freeway starting down low in Southern California. Then you have 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, going all the way up to the northern states, up close to Canada. So if you get on the 10, on the west coast, you can end up somewhere in Florida in the east coast. Now, 710 is an interesting freeway because from 105, I got on 710. Now, 710 is a freeway that feeds off of the 10 freeway. So any freeway that is connected to another interstate freeway, they have that system pretty well defined. So it's pretty cool. So now from the 710, I'm going to jump out of 91. And you, you must be wondering, what 91 does not follow any of these rules. It's not ending in a 5, nor in a 10 or a 0. Well, 91 freeway is a state freeway. It's a California state freeway, and it goes from east to west, and it touches many other California state routes. So these are called state routes and they are, they're also freeways. So I gotta get to 91 East and here's my exit coming. Now I am driving my brother's borrowed car and it's a little smarter than my car. Anytime you're crossing the lane, it tells you, hey dude, you're crossing the lane. Watch out if there's cars next to you. Now, if you have the indicator on, if you're going right or left indicator on, that message or that warning beeping goes away. Which is really interesting. It, they thought of it like, yes, I know I'm turn getting into the right lane. I know I'm getting in the left lane. All right, so I am getting on the 91 freeway, which is also called the parking lot freeway of Southern California. Why, you must ask? Well, this is the only artery, corridor, main freeway that connects 
the Orange County to the Riverside County. They have not gotten any other separate routes that will get you between the two areas. Sure, while you're in Orange County, you can take inside streets to get around. But once you're trying to cross over the county, you're like, no, we're just going to put this big humongous golf course in the middle and you may not cross you have to take the 91 freeway and guess what when i when i first started driving the 91 freeways 25 years ago we had four lanes on each side and you might be wondering wow that's a lot of lanes well guess what it was actually three lanes then they added the carpool lane and then they made the carpool lane into an express lane where you had to pay a toll. Then they added more lanes, so now there's a total of six lanes on each side. Now, Adam Ruins Everything is a great show on the television. Like the show's title, Adam Ruins Everything. He literally ruins everything because he teaches you and informs you about the different things that you might be enjoying in your life. The very first episode that I saw of Adam Ruins Everything was all about the cars. And we love cars. We drive cars on a daily basis. Sure, it's not as apparent. Let me just set the context right. Growing up in California, everybody drove everywhere. Public transportation is minimal. Sure, there's a train that goes from Orange County to Riverside County and, and other counties, but the traffic on the freeway is still over powers. I mean, the the public transportation is horrible in Southern California. Now, LA's gotten better. They've got a underground train system. So anyways, talking about Adam ruins everything. In this episode, he talks about how the car industry came about. Cars needed roads and roads needed cars. So cars also need parking lots. Cars also need a lot of things that human beings don't really. I mean, if you use public transportation, you could transport more people in public transportation than you can in the many cars that you have to get on. So anyways, you got to check out the episode. Um, He just talks about no matter how many more lanes you add to a freeway, you will still have the traffic problem. Why? Because there's more cars being added every single day. There's dealership all across the state, all across the country that are there in the business of selling you a car. Freeways system was designed for the cars. Who pays for this? We do. And why do we pay for it? Because we drive on it. But why do states support? Well, it's it's a whole hullabaloo of blah, blah, mumbo jumbo, legal stuff. Now, I just want to get to some quick points. Car dealerships pay the largest amount of taxes to any state, any city, any county. And because they do that, the state can't really do a whole lot. They're like, all right, I guess you're paying a lot of this, so you get to control of a lot of what's going on. And that's one of the reasons we cannot have a proper public transportation system that will alleviate the traffic debacle we have in Southern California. Now, in Northern California, there's companies that have hired uh, charter buses to provide commuting to their workers and their employees, where they provide them with a fully equipped Wi-Fi, air-conditioned, equipped vehicle that you get on, jump on the vehicle, turn on your laptop, your Wi-Fi is on, you can start working, they drive you to where you need to go, you get to work, you continue working, you're kind of productive, but not everybody has that luxury. Everybody has to sit through the traffic, tell their life stories to whoever's riding with them, and nobody's riding with me, so I'm telling you guys my life story and my reason for sanity. All right, the traffic is slowing down. Got to make sure this episode is recording correctly. I've been having a lot of issues with the Anchor app. I still have not seen an update from them. I am positively sure that Anchor is working diligently on creating a better experience in their app. As part of a software development team, I know how hard it is to test and make sure that the features and the 
functionality of the app is working absolutely great and you got to go through rigorous testing and follow all possible scenarios. And in my team, we go through a lot of discussions, a lot of testing and a set code of what needs to happen first. The developers are making sure that their code is working like it should be and then they pass it on to the testers. The testers then test it and then they run different test scenarios against the set applications. We have a lot of automation involved of course so it it helps. Now with Anchor what I've enabled is anytime I post a new episode I create different segments so if you're not in- interested in a certain segments segment you can always click on skip and go to the next segment and there's also a way to see of what different segments are in the episode I might be right I might be wrong I'll have to double check on that but you can always skip a segment and go to the next segment for example the last episode that I posted where I talked about the different books that I was listening to. You can go from one book to the other book to the other book and listen to the little excerpt that I put together. Now I want to talk about Thursday. It was an excellent day. I shared the episode and I posted it in which I elaborated on all the things that I spoke at the LinkedIn local Nova Rest and Meetup and uh, it was an excellent experience. I'm still getting messages from people, connections that attended the event and I'm getting some good feedback and I hope to continue and provide more tips. I'll be working on at least 20 different tips and build them out as a blog post as well as an ebook. I'll have for each tip or two, I will have one blog post and for all of those posts combined will become an ebook. Of course, I'll be providing links to the applications, hardware, and all of the associated items that are talked about in those posts. I believe it'll be a good resource for whomever is interested in video production using Thank you for taking the time to listen to this episode. Please feel free to send a message on hacksandhobbies.com.